Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The Evocati have a new build, and this is a proper 318 build. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, in particular to my latest patron, Game Overture. Thank you all so much for the support, it is truly appreciated. So this new build is actually labelled 318.0A, as the persistent entity streaming playtests are now over, and the Evocati have officially begun testing the 318 features. There is a lot of features in this build, and performance certainly seems to be improving. Now, testing focus is hull scraping, the platform assault on Orison, security post Korea reactivation, courier delivery mission updates, sandbox prison activities, the sand caves, the Daymar crash site, three of Stanton's racetrack locations, the Grey Cat PTV racetrack, and the new rivers. So not all of the features for 3.18, but definitely a lot more than the previous builds. So firstly, we have the Daymar crash site, which is a large derelict settlement on Daymar, using parts of the Star Runner and the 600i, as well as some HABs adapted to the biome. This will create a point of interest, which include missions like Kill All, Kill Specific, and Delivery. And there should be a, an AI population here as well. Whether it's the Sand Nomads as they intend them to be, or if it's the Nine Tails, we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully, the time it's taking to get this out, it'll be the Sand Nomads. For the Sand Cave Archetypes, these are new cave additions that will be spread across multiple planets and moons of the Stanton system, including the Hurston planet and the moons of Magda, Ita, Daymar, and Walla. Each, it says, with their own 20 unique Sand Cave formations. And these Sand Caves also include a brand new land crustacean known as the Stone Bug, with its new harvestable, the Stone Bug Shell. So firstly, it does sound like they are saying that each of these planets and moons will get 20 unique sand cave formations, meaning 100 sand caves in total, with the sand bug harvestable. That is a pretty big step up from what we have already, and I suppose the first creature, although I do believe this is more of a interactable prop than a creature, I don't know if it's going through the whole AI animation rig kind of thing, I think it's more of just, it doesn't really do much and you can just find it. But yeah, a huge step to getting a lot more variety there. And this is just the, the sand caves. There are many more types of caves planned. Also for this build, they are introducing many of the new racing locations with this update, including three of the six new racetracks with three more tracks coming in a future PTU update. And these include the Daymar Yedar Valley, which is 11 kilometers at 235 degrees from the Garden Underground facility the Orison Kaplan Stadium, which is 16.5 km distance from the Orison Marker at a, an orientation of 244 degrees, and then Hurston's Lawville Gateways, which is 6.5 km at 290 degrees from the Lawville Quantum Travel Marker. Basically, if you fly behind the CDB, you will see it. Also, as mentioned, they have the Grey Cat PTV racetrack, which will be found at the Orison Vision Center on Crusader, which is the same location as the most recent Invictus launch week. Now, for Security Post Korea, this place is being reactivated as we have heard, and it now has full-time staff present and will be off-limits to civilians, unless you get prior authorization, which we will speak about in a second. Korea has had a full art redesign polish, including a new evidence and contraband processing office edition with an interactable contraband dispenser, new traversal pathways, new color schemes and branding, They've also updated set dressing and cover for the whole interior. They've also updated the admin AI and reinforcements, which now include the new Crusader security loadout and police detectives in Kevlar. So basically, inside Korea, criminals will be able to trigger a boss AI to spawn after they kill several AI. And once the boss is killed, you will then be able to loot him and find a code on the body to unlock and activate the contraband machine to dispense drugs and this will dispense up to 15 to 20 items, and once they have been dispensed, the terminal will shut down, and then once you leave the room where the terminal is, that room will lock, in, I suppose, kind of a cooldown phase. Now, this new location also includes a new mission called Retake Locations, which is a new mission type rolling out with Korea initially, and is generated once X amount of the location's population is killed, pushing out a mission for players to lawfully enter and remove the attackers. So quite exciting, aside from what this brings to Korea, 
It is quite exciting to know that this new mission type is being used here and will likely expand to other locations. There could be a settlement that gets attacked and once an X amount of the population there gets killed, it could then post this mission for people to come and help. And that could even apply to space stations and landing zones, maybe even somewhere like Lawville. So nice to get this new mission type coming in, but also with Korea giving criminals something to get on with that is more of a challenge and creating this point of contention. Next, we have the platform assault on Orison, and this is using the floating platform called Inspiration Park, which was used for Siege of Orison, and will include bounty, assassinate, and clear missions, similar to those found at the underground facilities. So again, nice to make use of these locations. Now for hull scraping, both ship and FPS, repair and soft death, I have spoken about those in the last patch. They actually came in with the last Eva Cati patch, even though that was a stress test patch. So I won't go through that here. But for the prisons, they have expanded the prison gameplay with a new suite of missions and activities to give inmates more opportunities to earn merits or aid in their escape. So the prisons themselves are now filled with an emergent population of prison guards and prisoners with lootable items. And players will be able to loot contraband located throughout the prison's mines and from bodies to then sell back to the prison kiosks to gain merits, which in essence will reduce your sentence. Now this includes a brand new mission, Escape Delivery Mission, as we saw on a recent Star Citizen Live, but it also says that a player will now incur a punishment for suiciding in prison. However, if you retrieve your gear from your dead body, you can then instantly pay off this merit value. So I guess it's punishing those or giving more risk reward to those who are trying to escape and failing. Now for weapons and items, they've added the Greycat Multi-Tool Salvage Attachment, which is obviously needed for salvaging. For core tech, they have implemented the Persistent Entity Streaming Tech, making use of the Entity Graph and Replication Layer, which will allow for every dynamic object in the game to fully persist across all servers, irrelevant of whether it's owned or held by a player. And from what we hear from the Eva Cat is, items that they dropped hours ago are still where they left them. Plus, they persist through 30Ks. So great that this is now working as intended. And they also mentioned that after a crash to desktop, their ship full of cargo came back to exactly where they left it. Not waking back up and then going and spawning that ship in the same state, but actually where it was with them still in the ship intact. So it does look like they have the dedicated game server crash recovery tech in as well. Now for locations, it says they are adding dozens of additional rivers and lakes on Microtech and Hurston. And last we heard, Will Hain, the guy working on this, was saying that there is about 40 plus rivers. Hopefully that is still the case, as I do look forward to exploring them all. For the restricted area rework, this is new for 318 and for landing zones. And instead of a ship being autopiloted away or destroyed, upon entering a restricted area, players will be given more freedom to fly and maneuver around the cities but then after a while given a text warning and a countdown and an arrow pointing towards the quickest exit. And if the countdown ends or they go further into the restricted area, then the player will be teleported to a safe location and their ship will be impounded as well as receiving a misdemeanor crime stat. It does say that the same will happen for those in ground vehicles, but for players on foot, you will just be teleported and I assume given a misdemeanor that you'll have to pay as a fine. Now, although the artificial teleportation is not the ideal, I would love for it to be more of a you will be chased and arrested, which could be something to come later on. But for now, it gives more freedom to explore and utilize maybe escaping bounty hunters while not being so restrictive, but stopping people who might be causing trouble around landing zones. So nice to have that freedom. Could be great for racing as well, trying to compete against the timer to get in and out of a landing zone and follow a course. That would be kind of cool, or a restricted area, sorry. But a nice new addition that is much less artificial than it was. Now, another new update that we didn't know was coming is improvements to the Caterpillar Rex sites. And I believe these are the newest Caterpillar additions, not the old Caterpillar sites. I don't know, I could be wrong. But they have added base AI to populate these sites, along with kill specific and kill all missions, plus a general polish pass and visual improvement. So this was a great surprise to see finally getting NPCs at these locations in the verse, plus more missions here as well. So I was very happy to see this. And also getting an update is the Derelict Reclaimer Settlement. And this location is having a general polish pass, general visual improvements, 
but also additional buildings. Now, I believe these buildings refer to, like, habitation buildings for the NPCs to give more of a sense that it is a settlement and not just a derelict ship. Whether this affects the gameplay there, I don't know, as I think the AI only really spawn in when a mission has been taken. Hopefully they can have them as a permanent residence there, but we will see. They've also added parallax interior window shaders for buildings around all landing zones, and this is what we see at Orison, giving the impression of an interior, basically just adding more life and believability to the landing zones. Uh, talking of life and believability, for AI, there has been an update to the AI at landing zones and their loadout, which includes updating many NPC loadouts throughout the Stanton system with new shopkeeper outfits, earth fashion dress, hospital surgeon outfits, service hats and aprons in shops, and armor sets. So this will definitely breathe a lot more life into the verse and into the NPCs around Stanton, which may only seem like quite a small insignificant addition, but ultimately will help to sell the realism of these locations and eventually provide more varied loot for us, if we so want them. Now, next up we have yet another new addition, which is called Courier Delivery Mission Updates. And these are new local courier delivery missions around each Stanton Planet system. So again, utilizing the reputation with the usual four delivery companies. And it says there are four new delivery reputations based on the area you are in. And these new missions can be acquired after completing the intro mission for the local company. Now, I have no idea what these missions are, but like what we already see with the Reputation 2 delivery missions, we have your basic entry ones, then the three box missions, and then also once you get to a certain level, level 2 runner I think, you unlock the 45,000 UEC bunker box missions. So whether or not these new missions are utilizing the 1SEU cargo boxes, or having boxes maybe provided for you to transport, that would be nice. As we know, they do want to work on large container and multi-container box mission hauling, separating commodity trading and hauling a lot more. Uh, I do wonder if it could be the same principle, but on a much smaller scale. Again, I don't know. That is all speculation there. Hopefully, we'll hear more about it soon, though. Next, we have quality of life inventory updates, which allows for items to stack, allows us to transfer all, that will work on selected filters and a toggle option to always show or hide item ports for equipping gear. So a great useful addition for what we have right now, definitely making it a lot more easier to use. Implemented in this 318 build is the updates to the crime stat system with crime stats 1 and 2 no longer punishable by death and have to be paid off via a fine. For Cortec, they have added the new Gen 12 renderer as we know and they have updated the commodity kiosks to use building blocks, which in itself, it will be much nicer and easier to use and understand, so that is a big win. But for this build, there are 11 bug fixes, one of which includes stopping the Drake Corsair from nosing down in atmosphere, which is a huge win for me. Uh, also, there are eight client crashes fixed, six server crashes fixed, and one Gen 12 GPU crash fixed. Now, to finish with, there is a whole host of new quality of life updates, for Arena Commander in 318, of which I will not be going through here, but as usual, I will link the patch notes in the description. So if you are interested in reading this, you can do so in your own leisure. There are big changes coming in if you are interested to learn more. But that is one hefty patch, and I am so excited now to see 318 finally on the rollout and getting more and more likely for this December release to live. Let us hope that we will see a Wave 1 ASAP so I can start jumping in and actually showing you all the juicy new features. Now Alpha 318 is turning out to be quite a god patch. That will certainly change the way that we play Star Citizen from 318 onwards. And also do note that the developers did say relatively recently on a Star Citizen Live that the work needed to get server meshing in is significantly less compared to that of getting persistent entity streaming in and working. And multiple aspects of server meshing is already working, so as much as it's taking a long time to get persistent entity streaming out the door, server meshing is not going to be equally long or longer. But with that said, I will be working on a video highlighting everything that is coming in with 3.18, as there is way more than we were originally shown and showed on the roadmap. Lots of little updates that actually have quite big impacts. So if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. This Thursday, we will be certainly talking more about this. 
Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does the channel a big favour, and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.